Getting more creativity into your life. What does that look like? Keep watching. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Paint by Monster with me, your host, Easel Monster. Usually, when I set out to make videos for you, I think about having a theme, and I think about making an entire show that's sort of self-contained. All of the ideas will be in the show. It'll have a start. It'll have a finish. Something will happen in the middle, and usually I'll tell some jokes, talk some art, and make something for you, draw something for you, but it'll be a self-contained episode. Well, this time on Paint by Monster, we're going to do things a little bit differently because... I have a story that I would like to tell you, but I would also like to talk to you about the creative process behind the story. And so in order to do that, I need to break this up into multiple videos. So this time I need to draw a big drawing of a bunch of cartoon ducks driving a fire truck down the street really, really fast. Okay, so uh, I'm not going to tell you the story and I don't want to spoil anything for you. But for now, I'm going to get some tracing paper out and I'm going to start drawing this cartoon of these ducks. I'm drawing it in pencil, and I'm going to erase as I need to, but I'm going to put layers of tracing paper down and allow this drawing to sort of build up toward a final drawing. This is a nice way to work. A number of illustrators work this way, especially in the past. This is an older kind of a way to work. You can buy a roll of this kind of yellow tracing paper. Lots of places. You can get it at Hobby Lobby. You can get it at Michael's. You can get it at whatever your local art supply store is. You can get it at an architectural supply store. And it's just, there's nothing magic about this. It's yellow tracing paper and masking tape and a pencil and some erasers. That's it. So I had this idea for a story that, again, I don't want to tell you anything about because I don't want to ruin that for later on. But I wanted to draw this drawing of these ducks, and then I have to decide how I'm going to get the drawing onto some watercolor paper. And I want to use hot press watercolor paper because I want the watercolor paper to be smooth. The difference between hot press and cold press watercolor paper is whether or not the paper has a tooth or not. Is there a surface texture to the paper? Cold press paper has a surface texture to it. They call that a tooth. Hot press paper has no tooth to it. It's very smooth. Well, I like to ink with a watercolor brush and use a cartoon black line around things, and hot press paper does better than cold press paper to do that. So, I want to transfer this drawing onto a piece of watercolor paper, and I have some options for doing that. One of the options is to use a light table. This is a portable light table. Uh, it's got a piece of frosted plexiglass here in the top. You turn a light on, and it allows you to see through multiple sheets of paper. Animators have used this for years. Designers used to use this. Newspaper people used to use this once upon a time. All kinds of people found a light table handy. They're pretty inexpensive to buy. I don't know when I bought this one. I've had it for years and years. And, you know, back when dinosaur roamed the earth, I bought this light table. Anyway, I could put this finished drawing on a light table. And I could put my piece of watercolor paper over the top. And I could ink directly through that. That's one way I could do it. I could also take a much more time-consuming and older approach. I could take this drawing when it's completed and I have solved all of the tonal values and all of the lighting and that kind of stuff. Then I would flip this tracing over and I would redraw the very same drawing by tracing it in reverse. And then I would transfer that drawing onto the sheet of watercolor paper. You do that by placing the reverse drawing face down and rubbing in order to transfer all of the lines onto the watercolor paper, which is a nice thing to do if you want that kind of an old look to your drawing. And I think because I just now said that it would make it look old, I think I'm going to do that even though it's going to take longer than... You know, I don't know. I don't. That, that'll be the next time. Next time on Paint by Monster, I will transfer this drawing of these ducks onto watercolor paper and... and I don't know what's going to I'm not going to tell you the story yet um, because, well, it's not time to tell you the story until the, maybe it will be when the drawing's done. I don't know, but not yet. The last video in this series of videos, I will tell you this story about why these ducks are on this fire truck and what they're up to. All right, let's talk about getting more creativity into your life. Here are some ideas for you. Number one. 
Be a lifelong learner. Get excited about learning stuff. If you are not feeding your creative self anything worthwhile, then nothing worthwhile is going to come out of you. Number two, the path to excellence looks like this. First, you copy what somebody else is doing, and then, once you have some mastery of their process, then you begin to explore your own ideas. All artists are plagiarists at first. We were all inspired by, and continue to be inspired by, other people. But once you have some mastery under your belt, you can begin to go and explore your own ideas. So. Emulate the excellence of the experts and then explore the ideas that excite you. Number three, get to work. The secret to a successful creative career is working, not waiting for inspiration. Waiting for inspiration is for amateurs. The professionals show up and they get to work. Inspiration is looking for people who are at work. Arnold Palmer, the golfer, said, the more I practice, the luckier I get. Get to work. Number four, get in the habit of writing your ideas down in such a way that you can go back and look at them. I keep a sketchbook and I have for years. I always have several of them going. It's a great discipline if you are going to be a creative person, not just a visual artist, any sort of creative person. Get in the habit of writing your ideas down. Number five, Learn how to draw. Drawing is a skill. It's not a talent. No baby was ever born knowing how to do it. Michelangelo said, If people knew how hard I worked to get my mastery, it wouldn't seem so wonderful at all. Drawing is a skill, and you can learn how to do it. I've mentioned this in other videos, that if you can learn how to read, you can learn how to draw. It will give you a command of a visual language, and I can't say enough good things about learning how to draw. All right, in more videos, we'll talk about more ways to get creativity into and out of your day-to-day -day life, because that's really what I want you to take away from this. So, here is the finished drawing of... The fire truck ducks. In the next video, we'll talk about the next step. Hey, if you like this video, please like and subscribe. Also, please leave me a comment in the comments section below. Thanks to all of my supporters on Patreon. And in the meantime, you know what to go do with yourself, right? Go make some art. Make a drawing or a painting. Go make something entertaining. Make some art. Go make some art. Go get your pencils, paints, and papers, plaster, chisels, markers, scrapers, rulers, canvas, brushes, hammers, nails, and tape, guitars, and super glue. Get glue and macaroni, cameras, frames, and fried bologna. Go get anything you need for making art. That gnawing feeling deep inside that you can do it isn't lying to you. Get up off your butt and make some art. Paint by Monster is made by one monster sitting in a tiny upstairs bedroom studio smack downtown in Muncie, Indiana. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Go make some art. And see you next time.